an age of expansionism. By the 1840s, young America boasted its freedom from tradition and restraints of any kind, unaware that the nation that did not concern itself with the practical consequences of its action was headed for a catastrophe. Movement to the Far West In the 1830s and 1840s, American settlement pierced the line of the Mississippi and reached the Pacific. Settlement often spilled over into the borders of the United States and encroached on lands owned or claimed by both Mexico and England. Borderlands of the 1830s The dream that Canada might someday belong to the United States came to an end in 1842 with the Webster Ashburton Treaty settled on the northwestern boundary. Americans looked instead to three other territories, Oregon, an area much larger than the present-day state of the same name, where the United States and England had a joint right of occupation. New Mexico, then owned by Mexico, and California, also owned by Mexico but virtually uninhabited. The Texas Revolution Americans, including many slaveholders, immigrated to Texas, owned by Mexico in the 1820s. These Anglos never fully accepted Mexican rule, especially after 1829 when the Mexican government tried to abolish slavery after a series of incidents armed rebellion broke out in 1835. The Republic of Texas in March of 1836, a convention of Texans declared independence. After a short, brutal war, Texans forced the defeated Santa Ana to sign a treaty recognize, recognizing Texas's claim to territory all the way to the Rio Grande. Texas was independent, but Mexico refused to recognize this new nation. Texas opened her lands to even more rapid American settlement, and it was the desire of most Texans to join the United States. President Andrew Jackson, however, fearing a war with Mexico and domestic political controversy, delayed the annexation. Trail of Trade, Trails of Trade and Settlement one of the trails used by Americans in their westward movement, the Santa Fe Trail, was closed by Mexico as a result of its war with Texas. Along the Oregon Trail, a heavy stream of settlers moved through the Rocky Mountains and into the Oregon country. These settlers demanded that the United States end the joint occupation with England and assumed full control of that territory. The Mormon Trek Along those moving west were members of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. Founded by Joseph Smith in 1830 in upstate New York, the Mormon Church attempted to revive the pure Christianity they believed had once existed in Aboriginal America. Because of their unorthodox, unorthodox beliefs and practices, polygamy for example, Mormons suffered persecution that sent them ever eastward or westward. They established their own city, Nauvoo, Illinois, but after Joseph Smith was killed by a mob, Mormons, Mormons resettled around the Great Salt Lake in Utah. They established a state called Deseret, and thanks to a strong central government and the discipline and dedication of the community, they transformed the desert into farmland. Mormons at first resisted being governed by the United States after the area was taken from Mexico, and in 1857 the United States and the Mormons almost went to war. Both sides backed off, and Brigham Young, the Mormon leader, accepted an appointment as territorial governor for Utah. Manifest Destiny and the Mexican-American War Americans' western movement created a confrontation with Great Britain and a war with Mexico. Tyler and Texas 
John Tyler had been placed on the 1840 Whig ticket as vice president in order to get some Southern votes. Whig leaders never expected him to become president in 1841. By 1844, Tyler had broken with the Whig party, and his hopes for a re-election in 1844 rested almost entirely on finding a new and popular issue. He began pushing for the annexation of Texas, which was a popular issue in the South, but the North was indifferent and perhaps even hostile to the idea of adding a new slave state. When Tyler negotiated a treaty of annexation with Texas, the Senate refused to ratify it. The Triumph of Polk and Annexation At the Democratic Nomination Convention in 1844, Southern delegates had enough strength to give the nomination to James K. Polk of Tennessee, who was strongly favored in annexing Texas. In order to win Northern support, Polk also promised to extend U.S. jurisdiction over all of Oregon. His victory over Whig candidate Henry Clay was a narrow one, but Polk and Congress interpreted the results as a mandate for expansion. Congress annexed Texas even before Polk was inaugurated. The Doctrine of Manifest Destiny the rationale behind American expansion is summed up in the phrase Manifest Destiny, first used in 1845. Expansion was defended on three grounds. First, God wanted the United States, his chosen nation, to become stronger. Second, the Americans took over new territory. They made these areas free and democratic. And third, the American population was growing so rapidly that the nation needed more land. The only question here was how far America would expand and whether it would use diplomacy or war to do so. Polk and the Organ Question America almost went to war with Great Britain over the ownership of organ country. President Polk was actually willing to split the area with England, but his public demands for the whole territory annoyed the English, and they refused to negotiate with him. In 1846, Polk notified Great Britain that the United States would no longer agree to a joint occupation. England prepared for war, but also proposed division of the area in a treaty that the Senate approved. Although the United States gained ownership of the Puget Sound, a deep-water port on the Pacific, the North condemned Polk for not having persisted in his demands for all of Oregon. War with Mexico When the United States annexed Texas, it also acquired a boundary dispute with Mexico. When Polk ordered U.S. forces to occupy the disputed area, a skirmish ensued which the President used to justify a declaration of war on May 13, 1846. Polk saw the war as an opportunity to seize California and New Mexico, those states that Mexico had refused to sell to the United States. In the war, General Zachary Taylor defeated the Mexicans in a series of battles in northern Mexico. New Mexico was taken and California fell to the American forces. The conclusive battles were won by General Wingfield Scott, who took Veracruz in an amphibious invasion, routed the Mexicans at Sierra Cuerdo, and occupied Mexico City by September 1847. Settlement of Mexican-American War In the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which ended the Mexican-American War. The United States gained the Rio Grande as a southern border and enlarged its size by 20% with the addition of California and the Southwest. Two powerful forces limited further American annexation or expansion, racism and anti-colonialism. The American people did not want to take in large numbers of Latin Americans whom they